Good morning. Welcome. Good to see you here this morning. We're going to have a beautiful, sunshiny day, looks like. Aren't you thankful? I'm thankful. Prayer cards. If you have a prayer request, raise your hand. We'll get you a prayer card. Today is uh, Girl Scout Sunday. We got Girl Scouts in here this morning? There's a couple of Girl Scouts. You got cookies by there? Yes. Okay. You can't come. You can't have Girl Scout recognition Sunday without the cookies. How much are cookies these days? Three fifty a box. Okay. Well, we we are going to formally recognize you in at eleven o'clock, right? Okay. But we do. We are very appreciative of our Girl Scout ministries, and especially when it's Cookie Sunday, you can. Um, so you can purchase cookies if you haven't already as at the in, in between services and after services. A reminder, the Young at Heart meets this Wednesday for lunch. Uh, a reminder, Easter Lily orders. Deadline is $3.15. They're $8. A reminder that this coming Sunday, $3.15 is Ellen big birthday bash and you can st this is the Ellen project you can still you can get the tickets t-shirts it's your last chance to order both of those if you can still buy tickets at the door I think I don't know if you can, but we want to have this is the big thing we're planning next Sunday night five o'clock auction live entertainment dinner birthday cake ice cream as we raise money during our special Lenten offering for uh, this young child in Uganda. So please, please be part of that effort one way or the other. And if you can't come to the bash, you can certainly still help out. Okay. All right. Who's for, who's for leaving daylight savings time alone, one way or the other, either way? I agree. <laughs> Let's petition our congressman. All right, we're ready. If you could please stand and worship with us. Say 
Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us all here this morning. I hope today is beautiful, but if it's not, we thank you anyway. Uh, Lord, I just pray that this morning that you open up our hearts and our minds to hear what you have to say to us uh, through Joseph and through the music. Lord, we love you. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen.
When he shall come with trumpet sound Oh, may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness Dear Lord, uh, thank you for being the cornerstone for us. Thank you for being a stronghold uh, no matter what we go through in our life. I just pray that you'll speak through Joseph this morning and that we'll all hear something that you have to say to us. Amen. Greet your neighbor and children can come down for the children's sermon. Good morning. We have a small crowd this morning, but I'm glad y'all are here. Miss Michelle was supposed to be here this morning, and she had a children's sermon prepared and then woke up and could hardly talk. So she asked me to read what she had prepared for y'all, so that's what I'm going to do this morning. It says, spring is such a wonderful time of year. The temperature begins to warm, and the world begins to take on a fresh new look. The trees start to put on leaves, and the grass begins to turn green, and the flowers start to bloom and everything is beautiful. There are other things that tell us that spring is here too. For one thing, baseball season begins. Another sign of spring is that people start their spring cleaning. What are some things that we need to clean when spring comes around? You got some ideas? Our faces? Okay, that's a good thing. Oh, vases. I'm sorry, vases to hold flowers. Yeah, that's good. You got an idea, Kevin? You do any spring cleaning? The house. The house, yeah. (laughs) Well, spring is a good time to give your house a good going over and clean everything and get rid of a lot of junk that maybe you don't need anymore and have just been holding on to. This morning, I want to tell you about a time when Jesus did some spring cleaning. It was time for the annual Passover celebration, so Jesus traveled to Jerusalem. When he arrived in Jerusalem, Jesus went to the temple, and he couldn't believe his eyes. There in the temple area, he saw people who were selling cattle, sheep, and doves for the people to use as sacrifices in the temple. There were tables set up for the money changers so that people could change their money and pay their temple taxes, and it looked more like a carnival than a house of worship. Jesus did not like what he saw. He was so angry that he made a whip from some rope, and he drove the cattle and the sheep and those who were selling them out of the temple. He went to the tables of the, of the money changers and turned them over, scattering coins all over the temple floor. And to the ones who were selling the doves, he said, Get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? Yes, I would say that Jesus did some spring cleaning in the temple that day. So as we think about Jesus cleansing the temple, we should also think about some other cleaning that needs to be done. We're in a season called Lent, and at first, the word Lent means the season of spring, but it has now become so much more than that. It is a time to look inside ourselves and see if there is anything in us that needs to be changed. 
Are there some areas in your life that Jesus needs to do some spring cleaning? It's something good to think about, and I know there are some in mine. Will you say our closing prayer with me this morning? Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, during this time, when we think of spring cleaning, we ask you to forgive us when we do wrong and to make us clean. Amen. Josh is, is our, uh, I don't know what we're going to call you, not substitute, because we hope you come and play a whole lot of times on the guitar, and I think you could hear it. Boy, what's that powerful already this morning? Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Got me in a rock and roll mood. You know, my daughter, oldest daughter, sent me a text last night, a picture of Stevie Nicks being concert, and I said, where is this? She said, we're seven rows back in the concert. I said, do you realize that she turned 67 in May? She's older than your daddy. <laughs> she was having a rocking out time. All right. Let's bow our heads for some prayer. Oh God, in your mercy, hear the prayers of these thy people. O oh Lord, you gave your law to guide our hearts. You've shown us the way we should walk. Your testimony is sure and wise. And so we come before you and offer in our worship to you, O oh God. You are worthy of our praise. <clears throat> and yet we must confess this day, O oh Lord, that even though we know your words are true uh, and we know your way of life is desirable, we often dishonor you with the way we live and how we choose to live and we know that you know our errors and so we come this day Lord and ask and once more for forgiveness and clear us from our hidden and public faults uh, help us to walk blameless in your sight remind us that you've called us to be witnesses in the world and to show the truth that's found in Christ uh, crucified and risen and we pray you'd fill us again with your Holy Spirit so that our testimony may bring others to worship your glory. This day, O oh Lord, we are reminded there are many who are in need of healing, whether it be uh, in their mind, body, or spirits. And we pray, O oh Lord, you'd touch them in your mercy, bring them to wholeness once more. We pray especially for those that are listed in our prayer list. And we pray especially this day uh, for... Karen, who's recovering from surgery. And we pray, O oh Lord, for our Girl Scouts and all that they do to help young uh, girls and uh, become good and godly women. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would find what we do here acceptable, for we pray in your name and we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Last week we heard a, a wonderful promise uh, for all those uh, who have been forgiven about salvation, for all those who have put their trust in Christ Jesus. And so today we look at the third uh, word or the thir third scene as Jesus looks down from the cross at those uh, faithful few, the few that, that stayed there, that were connected to him, uh, during this awful time. And I'm picking up the reading in Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 25. 
Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple he said, Here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you again for your words. Your words to us. Your words that have been recorded for us. The words that speak to us every day through the Holy Spirit. We thank you, O oh God. Amen. Well, we in the first two words you saw Jesus look to others, not to himself, even though he was suffering. He looked to others. And now here we see him begin to look uh, towards something that's more personal. We hear in these words, I believe, the compassionate heart of Christ as he speaks uh, obviously of the love and responsibility he felt for his mother. You know, when you look at Jesus, you, you see the perfect picture of obedience. And total obedience sometimes cost us things that we weren't expecting. In this case, it cost Jesus this pain, not only that he endured and in suffering on the cross, but also thinking about his mom, his mother. And I think it's important for us to, to, to let Jesus be human in his human part and let him have this moment when he looks there at his mother and his friend. And I think partly what Jesus is doing there is it's speaking to us to help us see that the, our true family is sometimes more than just our blood relations. Uh, many of you probably remember in Scripture where there was a time when the people, they came looking for Jesus, his family did, and uh, they were worried about him. And you remember Jesus uh, looked around and said, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And then he pointed to the disciples and he said, Here are my mother and brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. So one of the things I believe that's happening here is a reminder to us that our family is more than just our blood relation, that our family is, in a sense, all the people of God, all the people of God called the Christian church, everyone, all believers everywhere, are our brothers and sisters and family. And the church itself, 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 the church itself is like a mother to us. It is a spiritual mother. And so just like the Lord had to entrust His mother to His friend, we sometimes have to entrust our physical family to our spiritual family. And God has entrusted us a spiritual family no matter where we go. I used to tell my children, <clears throat> if they were ever in trouble, i say, if you're in trouble, no matter where you are in the whole world, find the nearest church. You're a Christian believer. Find the nearest Christian church and go in and say, I am a Christian and I need help. You know, when I uh, followed the call into the ministry, I remember... Uh, Talk, having a discussion with my mom, uh, and I said, the, the hardest thing for me is that I know that I'm going to be moving away and not, and not be able to be with you uh, on times like Mother's Day and Christmas and, and things uh, in the church, and I, I know I'll miss these times because I'll have my responsibilities as, at the church, at churches that I'm entrusted with. And I, and I never forget that my mom said, Son, don't worry. The Lord will give you a whole bunch more mothers. And I thought, you know, that's true. 
Uh, and I've seen that. The Lord not only gave me a whole bunch of m more mothers, they gave me a bunch more fathers and a bunch of brothers and sisters, you know, and all these folks and friends that is a lot more than I would have had if I'd stayed put with this immediate family situation. And so during those years, uh, through the years that I have been away, and they have faced a lot of challenges, a lot of difficulties. I, of course, wished I could have been there. There's a lot of things that I would have liked to have seen uh, with my grandchildren that I never got to see because I was too far away from them. But I entrust their lives to God. I, I hope that you will always entrust all of your family, your extended family, your friends to God and to those believers who have become their family through Christ's church. Now, the other second thing I want you to see here in this picture is that not only did Jesus do what he was supposed to do in being obedient to God the Father, but the disciple John, and there's got to be a reason for the fact that the Scripture always records that, that way after the fact. You know, the Scriptures were written years after the fact the disciple who Jesus loved. John, the disciple John, was also clearly showing, uh, exhibiting obedience. Obedience uh, to the Lord as his Lord and obedience, of course, to what Jesus wanted him to do. John did step in. Tradition uh, uh, has that, John, that Mary lived with John until she died. Uh, so John did step in, became a son to Mary, took care of her, and opened his home and took her in. And Mary became the spiritual mother, if you will, not only of John, but the fledging church. And, of course, Mary has remained an important figure in the Christian church even until this generation. And so it's important to see the obedience of not only John, but the obedience of Mary. So we have this special uh, illustration of being obedient to God uh, through the way Jesus lived his life and the way Mary and John lived their life. You know, it's probably important for you to think about this for a moment because Mary knew from the beginning that it was going to be a great honor for her to, to bear uh, Jesus. But as when Jesus was just a baby, uh, she learned of a, that she one day would suffer great pain. I don't know if you remember this in Scripture or not, but on the day of Jesus' circumcision at the temple courts, there was a man named Simeon, or Simeon, Simeon. And God had revealed to this man through the Holy Spirit that he would not die, Simeon would not die, till he saw the Messiah. And upon seeing Jesus, Simeon said to Mary, and this is in the Scripture, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. And then he said, in that prophetic words, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. You see, Mary was warned that moment. Now, could think about that as a mother. You are mothers out there. What if you were warned at the time of circumcision of your son that, uh, that someday that son would cause you a great pain that would pierce your very heart? And yet she continued in obedience to God the Father to raise Jesus in complete obedience in the faith, knowing that one day... This would bring her great pain. This day at the cross that I just read you is the day that she felt that stabbing pain go through her heart as she saw Jesus first carry his cross and then later be hung upon the cross. She gave up her son that day. Imagine the pain that she felt. Imagine the pain that Jesus felt having to tell his mother, this is now your son. But by doing that, by being obedient to that, and this is the important thing to see, is the lives of millions of people 
from that day to now have been saved and are still being saved. And so we have these two words about others and finally a word from our Lord that is very, very personal. Here is your son. Here is your mother. <clears throat> Christ's compassionate heart and Mary's undying devotion have inspired many throughout the generations. It inspires many to do all the many things that they do to step in and help each other, especially if there's voids in someone else's life. You know, if it hadn't been for the Christian faith, I don't believe that so many things that we just think of nowadays as benevolent ministries would have ever happened. It was because of people being touched by the compassionate Christ caused them to become doctors and nurses and missionaries and preachers and teachers. Christ's compassionate heart makes people want to fill a void in their life and to do more with their life than just exist. There's a good book called Loving God. Now the author's kind of controversial, but that doesn't matter. The book's a good book. In this book, the author, Charles Colson, tells a story of a 91-year-old woman who became known as Grandma Howe. This woman moved into the twilight of her life. And, be, and as she moved into twilight of her life, as many people as they get older, they become depressed. And she had just about let depression take over. She decided she was ready to give up and die. <clears throat> After all, she had already outlived one of her children. What, her other child was in decline in health. Most of her friends had died, and she began to believe that she had nothing to live for. And one day, she prayed. She prayed with all her heart and told the Lord that if He didn't have anything else for her to do, it was time for her to die. According to Grandma Howe, God spoke into her mind these words, Write to prisoners. Write to prisoners. And so she wrote her letter. She wrote this letter, and I quote, she said, Dear inmate, I am a grandmother. My love and sympathy goes out to you. I'm willing to be a friend. If you'd like to hear from me, write me. I will answer every letter you write, Grandmother How. She sent the letter to the nearest prison uh, where she, from where she lived was Atlanta Penitentiary. There, the, the letter was cycled its way to the prison chaplain. Prison chaplain read it and sent her eight names of prisoners. And that became the beginning of a very unbelievable ministry of encouragement. And over the next months, this elderly woman carried on an extensive written ministry with hundreds of incarcerated men and women. And all of it was done from her little room in a home for the aged in Columbus, Georgia. This is a true story. One inmate wrote, Dear Grandmother Howe, you've given me all the love that I've missed for years and my whole outlook on life has changed. And you made me realize that life is worth living and that it is not all bad. End of quote. You see, I give you this example and read you this story because she became a great spiritual mother to many people in need. When you have total obedience to what the God the Father calls you to do, it oftentimes requires great sacrifice. It oftentimes requires you to do things you never expect to ever do. For our Lord, it meant for him to look down on from the cross upon his own mother. Think about that. For his mother, it meant she became the spiritual mother of a whole lot more family than she ever expected. 
for his friend, the disciple that followed him. It meant that he now had a responsibility for her, something he probably had never expected. Grandma Howe, it meant she wrote letters to the prisoners. You don't know how or which way your life is going to turn. You know, you know uh, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, what's that saying that goes, if, you, if, you life take, make, if, if life gives you a turn, take it? <laughs> you can't help it, right? Make the best of whatever circumstance that you find yourself in. And may you always hear the Lord's words from the cross. To me, they're all very powerful. So we stand at the foot of the cross too, uh, every Easter, every Lent. And may we always hear Christ's voice to us. May we always see and hear the love that the Lord says to us from the cross. Probably the most powerful examples of His love to us. And may we always understand that we have a mother that is here for us throughout every generation, and that is Christ's holy church. Forgiveness, paradise, mother. We stand at the foot, await for the Lord's next word. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith as we join our voices. <clears throat> We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus the Word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We're called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, and life in death and life beyond death. God is with us. We're not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Let our ushers come forward as we receive our tithes and our offerings. Please stand and sing with us.
Bring your tired, bring your shame, bring your guilt, bring your pain. Don't you know that's not your name? You will always be much more to me. Every day I wrestle with the voices that keep telling me I'm not right. That's all right. Cause I hear a voice and he calls me redeemed. When nothing say I'll never be enough. Greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world. In the world. Doubts and bring your fears, bring your hurt and bring your tears. There'll be no condemnation here. Oh, you are holy, righteous, and redeemed. And every time I fall, there'll be those who will call me a mistake. Well, that's okay. already won the war. He's greater, he's greater. I am learning to run freely, understanding just how he sees me, and it makes me love him more and more. He's greater, he's greater. There'll be days I lose the battle. Grace says that it doesn't matter, cause the cross already won the war. He's greater, he's greater. I am learning to run freely, understanding just how he sees me, and it makes me love him more and more. He's greater, he's greater. Cause I hear a voice and he calls me redeemed. When others say I'll never be in love. And greater is the one living inside of me than he who is living in the world. In the Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, may they be yours this day and each day. Amen. Y'all have a good week.